Welcome to today's lesson on wave terminology. Shanti will explain some of the terms linked with waves. Today, we will use a slinky and a ripple tank to demonstrate the terminology used in waves. Today in lesson 2, we continue to learn some basic terms to describe waves, so that you can be sure what each of these terms mean. We will define period, frequency, amplitude, in and out of phase, and wavelength. Now this may seem like a lot of new terms, but we are about to find out what they all mean in the context of waves. Let's join Keke as she explains the term period to us. We call the time that a pulse takes to complete one vibrational cycle the period of the pulse and represent it with the symbol T. Thanks Keke. Now she will explain frequency for us. Unlike many other terms in science, the word frequency has exactly the same meaning in everyday language that it has in physics. For example, if I asked you how frequently you have cricket practice in a week, what I want to find out is the number of practice sessions you attend in a certain time. In the same way, the frequency of the wave indicates the number of complete cycles in a given time. Let's look at an animation to clarify this property. The white flash indicates that one second has passed. In the simulated wave at the top of your screen, only one vibrational cycle is completed in one second. But do you see that in the simulated wave at the bottom of the screen, two cycles are completed every second? We say that this wave has a frequency of one cycle per second, while this one has a frequency of two cycles per second. We use the symbol F for frequency. Now that we understand the terms period and frequency, we will ask Shanti to explain the term amplitude for us. The next word we want to explore is the word amplitude. What does amplitude mean? Amplitude is the maximum displacement of the particles from the rest position. To illustrate amplitude, let's take a look at a transverse wave traveling down a slinky. You will see that the coils of the slinky are disturbed at right angles to the direction in which the wave travels. Now let's look at a diagram of the wave. The maximum displacement of the particles from the rest position is the amplitude of the wave. We can measure the amplitude from the rest position to the crest of a wave. Or we can measure it from the rest position to the trough. The amplitude remains the same. It is the maximum displacement of the particles from the rest position. When the slinky is moved gently from side to side, it has low amplitude. Do you notice that the amplitude has changed? The more vigorous the vibration, the greater the amplitude of the wave. So we can see that the amplitude of the wave is related to the energy of the vibrations. The greater the energy of the vibrations, the greater the amplitude of the wave. The next term we need to understand is in and out of phase. Over to you again, Shanti. Let's take a closer look at the motion of the particles in a transverse wave. Here the particles move up and down in a transverse wave. The wave is carried along at right angles to the direction of motion of the particles. We are going to look for two particles in the wave that are moving in exactly the same way at the same time. Let's look at this in an animation. The first particle is shown here as the red particle. It moves up and down just as we have described. Which other particles are doing exactly the same thing at the same time as this red particle? Here you see them. The particles that are moving in the same way as the first red particle have also been colored red now. They all go up at the same time and they all return down again at the same time. These particles that are moving in exactly the same way at the same time are said to be in phase with each other. Now which particles are moving in exactly the opposite way to this red particle? And here we have it. The yellow particle E moves in exactly the opposite direction to particle A at the same time. We say that particle E is exactly out of phase with particle A. 
they move in exactly opposite directions at all times. And the speed of A is the same as the speed of E at all times. Now you might ask, why is it important to know about particles that are in phase and out of phase with each other? The answer is that we use this concept to define the wavelength of a wave. Let's join Shanti again for an explanation of wavelength. The wavelength is the shortest distance between two successive points that are in phase. Let's use an animation to look at what we mean. The wavelength of the wave is the distance from point A to point C. These are two successive points that are in phase. And you can see that it doesn't matter at which part of the cycle we decide to measure the wavelength. It is always the same distance. We have come to the end of our lesson for today. Let's recap with Shanti what we have learned. The period of the wave is the time taken for each vibration. We use the symbol T to show the period and we measure it in seconds. The abbreviation for seconds is lowercase s. The frequency of a wave is the number of complete waves passing a point in one second. It is the number of vibrations per second or the number of cycles per second. We used the slinky spring to demonstrate important terminology. Remember, amplitude is the maximum displacement from the rest position. Wavelength is the distance between two successive points in phase. Two particles that move in exactly the same way at exactly the same time are called in phase. All these particles go up and down at the same time and return down at the same time. Particles that move in the opposite direction from each other at exactly the same time are out of phase with each other. Thank you for joining us in today's lesson. Have a look at the tasks and other physical science videos on the Mindset website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Until next time, goodbye.